The Directorate General for External Security, or DGSE, is France's primary foreign intelligence agency, akin to Britain's MI6 and the USA's CIA. Established on April 2, 1982, it operates under the French Ministry of Armed Forces, responsible for a broad range of intelligence activities. These include paramilitary and counterintelligence operations abroad, economic espionage, and safeguarding French national security. The DGSE's organizational details and operations are highly classified and not publicly disclosed. Tracing its origins back to World War II, the DGSE's roots can be found in the DGSS, founded on November 27, 1943, by politician Jacques Sustet. After various reorganizations and name changes, including a stint as the SDECE, it was extensively reformed and renamed the DGSE in 1982 by the socialist government of François Mitterrand. This reformation followed a period during which the SDECE remained independent, until the mid-1960s when involvement in controversial activities led to greater governmental oversight. In 1992, reflecting the changing geopolitical landscape after the Cold War, the DGSE underwent another significant shift. Many of its defense responsibilities, deemed no longer relevant, were transferred to a newly established military agency, the Military Intelligence Directorate. This directorate was created to address intelligence gaps exposed during the 1991 Gulf War and combine the expertise of five military groups. Training and Specialization This division specializes in clandestine and covert operations, including black operations, with core specializations in sabotage, destruction of material, assassination, detaining, kidnapping, interrogation, infiltration, exfiltration, and hostage rescue. Additionally, it tests the security of strategic sites like nuclear power plants and military facilities. DGSE's Action Division commandos received their specialized and unconventional training at three key centers, forming the CIRP. First is the CPES in Sercot, focusing on clandestine operations. Here operatives hone skills in stealth, intelligence gathering, and covert communication. The CPIS in Perpignan is dedicated to training special commandos and is another pivotal facility. CPIS emphasizes advanced combat skills, strategic planning, and special warfare tactics. Lastly, the CPEOM in Kelern specializes in combat diver training. Unique in its approach, CPEOM equips agents with skills in various maritime transport methods, including kayaks, jet skis, and even miniature submarines. These centers ensure that the DGSE Action Division is prepared for a wide range of missions, reflecting the division's commitment to maintaining a versatile and highly skilled force. This diverse training regime is crucial for the successful execution of their high-stakes operations, including the security assessments of critical facilities such as submarine bases and nuclear power stations. Operations Starting with Libya in the late 1970s, the French intelligence agency, then known as the SDECE, was deeply involved in the political turbulence that engulfed the region. In 1977 and again in 1980, the SDECE was accused of supporting failed counter-coup attempts against Muammar Gaddafi, following his Jamahiriya reforms. In a similar vein, the DGSE played a crucial role in the Central African Republic in 1979, this time, French agents, in coordination with the military, supported David Dako in restoring the presidency, transitioning the nation from the Central African Empire to a republic. This operation, which led to the ousting of Emperor Jean Videl Bokassa I, was a significant example of France's influence in its former colonies and the DGSE's ability to effectuate change in government leadership. And another one was the Operation Satanique in 1985, which involved the sinking of the Greenpeace ship Rainbow Warrior in New Zealand. The ship, which was involved in protests against French nuclear activities, became a symbol of the lengths to which the DGSE would go to protect French national interests. The operation resulted in the death of a photographer and led to a global outcry against France, with accusations of state-sponsored terrorism. In a contrast to these politically charged operations, the DGSE also demonstrated its proficiency in hostage rescue missions. 
A notable instance was in 2008, off the coast of Somalia, where DGSE commandos successfully rescued 30 hostages from pirates. This operation, while reported by the French military as having no casualties, was alleged by local sources to have resulted in the deaths of five Somalis. This mission showcased the DGSE's capability in high-stakes situations, adept in negotiating the complexities of international maritime security. Their involvement in Libya continued into the 21st century, with a focus on counter-terrorism operations against Islamic State forces. Particularly significant was their participation in the Second Battle of Tripoli in 2011. Furthermore, since 2016, there have been suspicions about the DGSE's role in an offensive combat capacity against Islamic State remnants in Libya. Despite official denials by France and Libya, claiming that any French presence was purely advisory, these operations have fueled speculation about the agency's ongoing active role in the region. An unsuccessful operation, Bulo Marer. In July 2009, a critical situation unfolded in Mogadishu, Somalia, involving French Directorate General for External Security Agents Denise Alex and Marc Aubrier. Deployed to train soldiers of the transitional federal government, their mission derailed when they were kidnapped from their hotel by armed men posing as police officers. The kidnappers' plans were momentarily thwarted when their vehicle broke down, leading to a confrontation with Hezbollah Islam, a Somalia Islamist militia. In the ensuing chaos, Alex and Aubrier were taken into custody by the militia, with Alex later being transferred to the custody of Al-Shabaab, an allied Islamist group. Aubrier's captivity ended under mysterious circumstances. He claimed to have escaped from his captors in August 2009 and made his way to a Somali government compound, from where he was repatriated to France. However, this version of events was met with skepticism, particularly in Somalia, where it was speculated that his release was secured through a ransom paid by the French government, a claim that France categorically denied. In response to Alex's continued captivity, a significant intelligence and reconnaissance effort was initiated by U.S. and French agencies. U.S. Army Special Mission Units specializing in signals intelligence and U-28A surveillance flights from Djibouti were deployed. Somalia assets recruited by the DGSE played a crucial role in tracking Alex's movements across various militant-controlled territories. This meticulous intelligence gathering, involving satellites and unmanned reconnaissance flights, laid the groundwork for a planned rescue operation by the DGSE's Division Action Unit. As Alex's health reportedly deteriorated, French President François Hollande, in a decisive move, authorized a rescue mission in December 2012. The DGSE's Division Action Unit, a 50-man close-quarter battle group, was dispatched to Camp Lemonnier for intensive training alongside a small team of U.S. Navy SEALs from Dev Gru's Red Squadron. The U.S. provided additional support, including surveillance assets such as a JSOC Predator UAV and air cover from AC-130 Spectres and an RQ-4 Global Hawk UAV. The rescue operation was launched on January 11, 2013. Fifty French Special Forces from the Division Action, supported by EC-725 Caracal helicopters, assaulted an Al-Shabaab position in Boulot Marer, where Alex was believed to be held. The ensuing intense firefight lasted 45 minutes, resulting in the deaths of 17 Al-Shabaab fighters, two French soldiers, and tragically, eight civilians, including a pregnant woman. The operation was ultimately unsuccessful, with the French forces withdrawing amidst heavy resistance. It was believed that Alex was executed by Al-Shabaab during the operation. Complicating the aftermath, the French military reported one soldier missing, presumed killed, although Al-Shabaab claimed to have captured him. This was later substantiated by a photo posted by Al-Shabaab on Twitter, showing the body of the deceased soldier surrounded by captured military gear. If you like what we're doing here, consider subscribing and hit the bell icon. See you all in the next video.